Squid Game. The challenge was tough for the cast to go through, and they had some strict rules to make the process even more challenging. Many contestants in the Netflix reality TV series weren't prepared for the weird rules that hit them while filming the show. However, one of the first rules was that they couldn't have their phone, clocks, or wristwatches, and there was no window to tell the time. So the contestants were made to understand all of these as soon as they were signed up and their phones were all seized a day before the first challenge. This rule of no sense of time was to prevent the participants from losing sight of the game as they were told that the red light game would last around two hours and that they would only have to hold their poses for two minutes. But that soon turned out to be a disaster as you will be shocked to see how the rule deeply affected the cast. Although they couldn't tell they were woken up around 3.30 a.m. and were asked not to communicate with one another. From the hotel, the cast were taken to a former Royal Air Force hangar in Bedford and given tracksuits and microphones. Also, the cast got foot and hand warmers, thermal underwear, and socks because of the cold winter. There were also portable heaters all over the tent, but all of this was before the game officially started. And because they couldn't tell the time, the contestants could only estimate that the game began around 1 or 2 p.m. As soon as the game started, the players had to unzip their tracksuits so that the fake blood on their shirts could be seen if they were eliminated. Their hand and foot warmers were also taken away from them. They noticed they had to hold their poses for about 15 to 45 minutes even though they were promised it wouldn't last longer than two minutes. This longer time frame was for the production to access the game and see who was moving, and they had to do this for all 456 contestants, which took a lot of time. One of the players on the show revealed that the effects of the prolonged time started showing immediately, saying, the second time the song played, I saw in my left peripheral vision that this girl was swaying. Then she just buckled, and you could hear her head actually hit the ground. Despite seeing how players were being defeated and fainting out of exhaustion. An announcement was made that the game had to continue and they all had to keep their positions. From there, a player revealed that people started to fall randomly out of exhaustion. So that leads to another strict rule they had on set, which means no lunch break, restroom break, or any relaxation whatsoever. One of the contestants, Jenny, revealed that they weren't even allowed to take water breaks and had to remain in the cold for over nine hours playing the game. Still traumatized by how this unfair rule affected her, Jenny condemned Netflix saying, I've never been that cold for that long a period in my life. We couldn't feel our feet or our toes. It was ridiculous. Take some responsibility for the fact that you were ill prepared for this kind of thing with this number of people. According to her, the producers should have adjusted a bit and allowed the players more comfort when they saw how dangerous the game was becoming. Another contestant, John, revealed that it was a horrible rule for them not to get a break in between filming. And he said that he had a terrible headache and felt dizzy throughout. He added that the game was too strict for everyone, especially for the older cast members, but he kept pulling through just for the prize involved, but later had to give up. He said, imagine you're playing red light, green light for six hours. What game is that? This isn't a game. The fun is now gone. You can't tell people they have to stand in below freezing temperatures in just a tracksuit and two pairs of socks. Come on. However, another player added that as soon as they started calling the medics for the 11th time, the production team relaxed the rule and allowed the contestants to rest. But then it was still a limited rest as they couldn't move their feet or leave their position for the restroom or anywhere else so they wouldn't ruin the filming. They could only bend their knees or move their hands around, which was still inconvenient, especially with the weather. Aside from not getting breaks between games, they were also not allowed breaks from the camera for the entire duration of filming. The camera was always on them, and another compulsory rule was that they had to be available from morning till the lights were out. One of the executive producers revealed that this rule applies to all reality TV show contestants, and they explained the reason behind it, saying, TV shoots are really long days. You're getting your contestants out very early because you want to film when you have light. However, the executive added that they couldn't stop or change the rule midway because they would lose a lot of money, which was why the contestants had to endure hours of torture in the cold. They mentioned that any problem could cause an additional 250 to 500,000 pounds, and they were trying hard not to cause further production problems, even though money isn't an issue for a big company like Netflix. 
With no idea of time and the cast working around the clock to participate in all the games, another rule on set says the contestants must be prepared to have a limited sleep time. And even while sleeping, the lights only get dimmed and not entirely out. Also, shooting continued even while they slept, so there was no adequate time to rest, and the cast had no choice but to stick to the rule and wake up whenever the production asked them to. There's no doubt that the show is also emotional, even for the viewers, but the cast faced significant mental stress while filming, and it was an important rule that they had to be prepared for. So the games weren't only physically draining, but mentally demanding, and they had to be ready for everything. However, the show provided a therapist to help players obey this rule. One of the participants, Katz, revealed how that helped them overcome the mental stress on set, saying, um, when I was mistreated by other players, there were therapists as part of welfare on set. I felt very validated. Another player added, that they took their mental health seriously on the show, and it helped them get through the process of emotional trauma that came with the game. Many fans would expect that the cast understood what they were signing up for, as Squid Game is never easy. And honestly, the cast knew they would have to go through some physically draining situations, but didn't know the extent of it. But then another important rule for the contestants was that they had to be physically certified for the game by a medical doctor before participating. Being fit was a compulsory requirement, as many applicants were cut off because of that. One of the contestants, Jenny, explained how strict the rule of medical fitness was for the show when she said, the application process was unlike anything I've ever done. The background checks and psychological checks, they were emailing, calling, or texting me every day from October to January. But despite being physically fit for the challenge, the extreme conditions they met with the first game were a significant setback for many of the contestants. The story soon changed as Netflix didn't make further provisions to help maintain the fitness of the cast. They only provided on-ground medics who were still delayed from attending to fallen players because they didn't want to mess with the production. The cast also had to follow another strict rule of being able to survive on scanty and small quantities of food throughout the production. This was to imitate how the original series cast ate in the show, but this rule also backfired. Before the red light game, the contestants ate lunch, but since the game lasted close to midnight, they couldn't have dinner as it was too late for the crew to get anything. Although they ordered pizzas for them, it wasn't enough to go around and most of them had to sleep hungry. An executive producer on the show revealed that this rule wasn't intentional as it was a nightmare to take care of the logistics, feeding, and accommodation of 456 people. It was even more challenging because many contestants traveled outside their country for the first time to participate in the games. Hence, it was a crazy experience both for the production and the cast behind the scenes, there's no point if a reality TV show isn't dramatic and it was an essential rule for the cast to be as fun as possible in the show as they were promised to be included in the final cut if they did well. This drama is majorly seen with eliminated contestants who play deceased as their fake blood bursts into their white shirts although they weren't mandated to pretend to pass away like in the original series it was still an essential rule for the cast to bring their dramatic game on many contestants are coming out to talk about their experiences and condemn the show for its inhumanity but there was another strict rule of non-disclosure on set most of the cast had to agree that they wouldn't reveal some of the things they went through behind the scenes even though they could still narrate to a point most contestants who have been voicing out their traumatizing experiences have been choosing to do that anonymously as the strict rules still binds them. What do you think of these strict rules the cast of Squid Game The Challenge had to follow? Share your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.